Good everyone, all good news video. Today we have a review on Mark Collins CL42 CN Falco. This aircraft has been a very well known premium to the older German pilots. Obviously, if you chose that as your first nation, you'd have gotten it free. And obviously, once Italy came out, it was transferred to this nation. But here's one thing I'm curious about older players of War Thunder, such as players who've been around a lot longer. Let's see if anyone actually has it, because not, not many people do, from what I've seen. But those of you who have the German Mark Collins CL42, put it in the comments below. I'm curious to see how many of you guys actually have it, because that's just what I wanted to begin with, and that's what I'm curious about, because I haven't seen many in a while. So the Mark Collins CR42 is a rank 1, battle rate 1.3, and it costs 250 golden eagles. But obviously if you pick Italy as your first nation, you will get this aircraft free. Now, I'm not going to obviously refer to that as part of the review, but that is something I normally say about these starter premiums. Now the CR42 is a very interesting aircraft in the fact that it is a biplane, however, it doesn't act like one. To me, this plane acts more like a monoplane, but at the same time, it does have better turn than most of the monoplanes it will see. However, against other biplanes, you actually have to utilize boom and zoom tactics. This thing will not beat the majority of biplanes in the turn. It might beat some of the underpowered ones, but I'm looking at you Furies and Nimrods. But other than that, you're not really going to beat many mono or biplanes in the turn. Purely on the basis that the Falco just doesn't turn like they do. Now that doesn't mean that this aircraft is bad, far from it. It's got a great rate of climb, the guns are pretty good as long as you're getting close, and personally, I adore the Falco. I've It's one of those biplanes that really teaches you the mentality of different types of combat in different types of aircraft. Because obviously, in a biplane, you expect to outturn everything, which the majority of players tend to think. But this is not the case for the Falco, as already mentioned. With biplanes such as Gladiators and Nimrod, well not Nimrods, um, with I-15s, you are actually going to have to use boom and zoom tactics against them, which this thing does very well at. It maintains its energy superbly. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to be outstalling any biplane, but you'll certainly give them a good time as long as you keep your speed up. Because the Falco can keep up with gladiators rather well, and some of the underpowered monoplanes will be easy pickings for you. Now sure, the Mark Collins CR42 is a premium, but given it's a rank 1 premium, as you'll notice with some of these reviews, I'm not really going to talk about like the boosts that you get with these aircraft, such as um, increased SL and RP gain, because you're not going to be using them for that long anyway. But for a bit of fun for a veteran player, maybe a bit of a learning experience, these planes are certainly very good for that, and the CR42 is certainly one that I can recommend if you need to practice boom and zooming, because it's just unique in that factor that the CR42 is not something you would expect to be used in a boom and zoom role. Now there is also the Swedish J-11 which you can also use if you don't want to fly Axis aircraft for whatever reason, but even so, that, that is the mentality that some people have, so I have to respect that at the same time. But, for 250 Golden Eagles, this thing is certainly worth it. Now in real life, CL-42s were used in the fighter bomber role, but in War Thunder, that is not the case. I believe also the CL-32 Biz was used in that role as well. Now, given that, we're going to have to consider the lack of ordnance, but to be fair, most, if not all, apart from like a handful of starter premium nation aircraft, do not have access to ordnance of some kind. The only ones I can think of are the Chinese, the, I think, um, the Russians get access to it, because obviously Zukovsky's Chaika. And the US get Gala's F3F, which has bombs, but only one drop. Now that does affect the Mark Collins' versatility, however the 50 cals are capable of knocking out tanks, so that is something to consider as well. 
You just have to get in close and make sure that your ammunition belt is nothing but armor piercing. Given that advice, I recommend running tracers. Obviously, convergence doesn't really matter because, well, they're, they're nose-mounted guns. But for 250 golden eagles, this thing might be a decent pickup for some of you. And obviously, with Italian players getting it at the box, this thing is certainly a good biplane to not only learn something from, but to have a bit of fun with. So let's jump into the battle and let's see what I got up to with the CR-42. Once again, I'm teamed up with Harry, Loki, and Tanker for you. One, two, three, four. We're obviously going out in the earlier tier premiums because obviously part of the little, I well little program I've had running for myself, which obviously I discussed it in the G55 video. Um, but if you're new to the channel and obviously watching this video for the purpose of a review, I'll briefly explain it here. The plan is for me is that I'm going to be reviewing the majority of the lower tier premiums and um, basically the plan is, is that I'm going to be um, reviewing as many premiums that I have to basically give an idea of if they're worth it or not. And obviously with the sale coming up soon I will have to obviously take that into consideration and that's why I'm trying to get as many reviews out as possible to guarantee that people do not waste their money on aircraft that they do not need. If you're not if I do not happen to have a review on a certain aircraft please do put that in the comments below and I will give my impression briefly on what I've experienced from other people playing it or the videos that I've seen on it. So I'm skipping us ahead because this battle is very short and there's a good reason for that. There is a single Catalina with the mines, there is a B-18 fully loaded with 2,000 pounds of ordnance and there are two F-222s with four 500 kg bombs. As you can imagine, this battle is going to be very short. But the Falco is still going to kick some ass in the meantime. So we've got a pair of peace shooters, Harry's out in his German CR-42, because obviously I know he has that, because we've, we've flown the German one together at some point, and that was actually quite a bit of fun, because we got to kick some CWs to the dirt. Well, he took out his CR-32, but he knew I had the German Mark Holland. That's kill number one, Harry had already done some of the work for me, and I just decided to finish it off. Fire on the second pea shooter, but obviously I don't want to make it so that it goes onto Harry's ass and kills him. So I cut the throttle briefly and finish it off for kill number two. As you can see, the turn rate is still competitive against the majority of monoplane fighters that you're going to be facing. But against biplanes, you're really going to struggle. So that's why I recommend keeping your altitude if you can. But see, since we don't have any biplanes on the enemy team anymore, I simply decided to turn fight with the P-26s. And at this point, a P-36A has decided that I'm going to be his bitch, so I have to force the Falco into defensive maneuvers. Which the Falco does very well at. For a biplane that's got a very good roll rate, and the turn rate that it does have, can put some people off. And if you throw it around, you certainly can outturn a P-36 in the CR-42. Trying to get guns here, and well, the seven, the 12.7s that are equipped on this aircraft are not the best, but they can still pack a bit of punch. Once you're getting close and actually get hits, of course. But no matter how hard the P36 tries, he's not outturning me. That's my third and final kill for this battle, because this battle is about to end very shortly. Now, obviously, you can't see the actual airfield marker over there, but those enemy bombers have just dropped on the airfield and are about to kill it. So, we're about to lose in the next minute and a half. Harry takes a kill on the P-36 there, and that was actually one of the more important fighters that we needed to go. But as you can tell, by this point, it's already too late, and there goes the airfield. Our tickets have started to bleed down, I can't kill the medium tanks on this map, so I just thought, sod it, 
I'm just gonna go for some ground targets and farm up a bit. Not like I need to, because the market distinction is already done on this aircraft. So using what little time I had left in this battle, I merely went for ground targets, which were flashing, and there was a couple of triple A's as well. But we're not winning this battle due to the airfield being destroyed. Which, to be honest, is probably one of the quicker defeats I've had at low tier, but hey ho, a well communicated squad of bombers can certainly do that to a battle, that's for certain. But Tanker actually lived in this battle, he brought his um, S81, and at the moment he's currently dealing with going back to base, but obviously Harry right there just team killed Loki for a bit of fun, and in a moment he's actually going to try and have a crack at me. But I knew he was going to do it, and I went into a defensive turn to make sure he couldn't get a shot. I'm going to have to try and get him back for that, but don't worry, I will. But still, for 250 Golden Eagles, as long as you, as long as you don't get auto wind by the airfield being destroyed, this thing is certainly very capable, and flying it in a squad is even more fun. It's a nice little low tier buzz box, and well, it might teach you a thing or two. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the CR42, and I will catch you all on the next one.